Good morning, everyone. This is now live from Zoom and also on FB um, about this uh, platform from us, Christ is the Head Fellowship. Today, we are going to uh, you know, have a topic in this message, in these teachings about how to rest in times of stress. Because you see, when we are stressed, you know, we are stressed, but we never get to the point of our desired rest. And so what happens, we linger on the stress, and then later on, we incur what we call illnesses or diseases because we are stuck in something that we never find the rest that God desired for us to have. You see, the things about the pressures of life and trials and temptations that comes into our way, you know, we call it, or I call it, the best teachers. Pain are the best teachers of our character and the virtues that God wants to develop inside of God. Not that God is sadistic, that he needs to, you know, put us into that storm-like experience of the disciples, but we needed that. Because what happens with the disciples is that when the storm came and they were all asleep, right? Okay, they were all asleep and they were just sailed by the waves, okay? But then again, sometimes we need to wake up and realize that there is a storm and the only person that we need to only call is the Lord. And what happened then, the Lord stood up and caused the storm to be still you see the storm are the best teachers for us to actually focus shout out to god because we need help and then when we need help just let's just trust him all right so here we go so to rest in times of stress all right so this is very very it, it's a wisdom kind of thing that we need to learn because what happens when we don't rest we go to panic mode and a lot of things that is not right for us. Before you knew it, nothing happened. You exhaust your energy and you were empty as when you came into that stress and then when you came out empty, nothing really happened. So Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 is a beautiful invitation of Jesus. While he was there, he told them, then Jesus said, this is him who's inviting. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. See, he spoke to the crowds. This is not only to those followers. Jesus, some of the audience of Jesus, sometimes they are a crowd that fills up a stadium right now or a big arena, you know, like for instance, the 5,000, the 4,000, and also sometimes he goes to just a solo visit or a solo conversation with whom? With, uh, with, with, with Zacchaeus and also with um, the woman at the well. See, Jesus does not actually choose and pick for this invitation. This is, can be anyone because this is a crowd he talks to. So this can be some people who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, but also those who never accepted him. Because you see, people are desperate for help. And thus, if they don't know Jesus, see, that's, uh, that's our, um, as people of God, that's, that's our plus. Because we can always call on the one who saved us. And we receive the grace of gift of salvation and we have access to him. But of those also who are, you know, bombarded by an issue of their life, somehow they don't even know. That's why they opted to second alternatives for their stress. You see all those things that are sometimes dangerous rather than helpful in their lives. They go to drugs. They go to places that will just, you know, kill them or rape them or use them. So the stress that they have is multiple stresses that somehow when you get into that place, sometimes the option for everyone is to just kill or end their lives. And that's a miserable state. That's now how God designed every single one born uh, in his image to just quit 
and just just because someone or something has happened in their lives. And so this is what we have to uh, go now. All right. You see, there's two versions in which I saw love. So from ESV and also from NLT. Come to me, all who labor. This is our now chapter, I mean, the, the portion of the verses. So that's only Matthew 11, but we'll take from Matthew 11, 28 to 30, which are all connected by this Jesus invitation to come. So he said, <clears throat> come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay. And then on the next, uh, next of the verse, the other one is, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. Kanina laden? No, heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Amen. So this is so beautiful. If you're just going to just digest each and every one of those words, you will find the wisdom right here on how to really tackle your stress. Okay. So what are the common stresses? We face now, we'll all will face this at one time or another. Number one, money stress. All right. So if we don't have enough and we have insurmountable needs, okay, sometimes we get to stress because we don't have enough to cater for what we actually need, right? The next one is our responsibilities. You see, you know, most of us as parents part of our responsibility is to actually to feed provide right for our children for our families and also our responsibilities then after that from family we go to work and so we have to have this you know community also that's watching us and we do our responsibilities if not then it becomes a stress to us that's why sometimes you know, you, you carry the stress to your home and then your home becomes, a, you know, a, a, what they call it, like a like um, a vessel that will actually just be the, the one that will just be filled up with the workplace or the stresses from your workplaces, isn't it? Sometimes that happens. Or in other words, the man, <clears throat> also the stress that comes from the families that after you work, and then you hear a noise from inside your home and something happened, right? These are the things that put stress into our lives. And sometimes we are caught off guard. We never did plan it out. We never are looking forward to that. But the saddest thing here is that we are in this world that is not really Jesus' a kingdom rulership yet. Though we have him in our hearts, Yet the one who rules the world is the prince of chaos. If Jesus is the prince of peace, the one who's operating nowadays is right now in our age is the prince of chaos. And right now they are very open to actually to introduce themselves and actually even in their platforms, they even say that. Now again, an added stress for all of us. Before it was just, you know, subdued and settled that you don't know what is going on. But now it's really blatantly, uh, you know, vocal and actually a visual. Okay. And the deadlines and the due dates and the events that goes with our lives. You see the, delay, the deadline to do this, the due dates to actually pay this, the bills, you know, our, our exams. All right. And also the events in the house birthdays at uh, church events and all that this puts stress into our lives another one is thinking of the future our career our destiny what will you still are doing something now in preparation for the future and you think you're not stressed you are actually stressed 
because the way you do things now of that future and the career and that's destiny, it's causing you to do it hard and work more hard, study so hard so that you will achieve a desired end, right? So also that's part of your stress. You, you may like it or not subconsciously, that's part of your stress, uh, you know, to, to actually make it to actually get to the point that you'll be promoted, get to the point that you're also going to be rewarded in your efforts in school as well as in your work, right? Even in church, that's also the thing. That's also the trend, right? People want to go to places uh, of, of promotion and accolades and glory. and But somehow those things put stress, in your life and if you're not careful it will overwhelm you and cost you defeat right the next one is sickness illness diseases or tragedies these are some of the things that sometimes because we are here in this world that is caused by the some invisible things and the world is not perfect it used to be perfect when when god the father created it the first but when sin came Everything was corrupted, everything was tainted, everything was marred by the curse on the ground, okay, in the Genesis account. So what happens, the ground was cursed, and so even all the creatures, the tiny things that we don't see, the microbes, the bacteria, the viruses, it causes sickness to us. And somehow, we were caught off guard too. Like for instance, I got, got the covid while I was just having a reunion with my family. Coming back, I didn't realize that I'm going to be in comatose for three and a half months. Would you believe that? I never did plan that out. In fact, I'm so wary and confident that God would heal me. But it didn't happen during the time before I got the COVID. I never would expect that. I'm a person who knows authority and I know how to pray, but somehow, it will not work and somehow the Lord is teaching, the Lord is communicating to us of something or sometimes it communicates to somebody you're close with, all right? Another one is relationships broken or unsettled. Somehow when a relationship is being shaken or <clears throat> it has caused you brokenness, somehow your heart sinks and shrinks to the point that you don't want to even live, right? Especially those issues of betrayal, those people who, uh, you know, become straighter, your best friends, you see all those issues. And even sometimes when you had issues on somebody that broke you, especially those who are married, and then they broke your trust, you're still unsettled in that relationship. You will never get to the point somehow unless God will intervene and the two people in that brokenness would come and ask God for rescue and be obedient to God and submit to God. Then it will the stress will become rest for them and become sometimes people uh, had the ministry as a result of that stress that are unsettled, that was broken, you know, and then they patch up and then they stayed. But still, the memory of that brokenness is there. You can never erase it. It's like part of the chapter of your life. But then, how the stress is being handled in terms of that is counts a lot, especially with us Christians, because in us, there's always hope and there's always restoration. Okay? And then the last will be the pressures from new people. So, of course, sometimes we go to new to meet new people, right? And we don't know how to behave and act because we need to put up what? The first impressions last, okay? So here you are going there. Yes, you put up a smile, but you stress on how to meet them up. And the one is the old people that for years you have that scene. And then there comes a reunion, okay? And then you don't know what to do because somehow they learn that you have a problem before or you have been a drug addict before or drug addict that day or drug addict when they saw you these are old acquaintances and then they'll sit you beat you up 
And then the pressure of that is somehow the person that you need to have reunion, you had something, right? And so the old acquaintances and then you meet them up will cause you stress. And the people also who became enemies, how are you going to face them? And these are the things that we Christians, sometimes the Lord allows it to happen so that we may gain perspective and come up with the truth, take away the lies, and so we will live in freedom of the truth. Of whom? The Lord Christ himself. God wants us to only connect to him for the rest of our lives because the things, the people around us, they are not permanent the only one that stays forever with us is jesus christ the lord who is the way the truth and the life and no one goes to the father except through him so here is an invitation of this lovely savior who loves you the most and says to you come to me yes and so let's move on our usual responses to distress is this when it comes to money, when we're stressed, this is what we always quickly do. We borrow money from banks, from friends, from relatives. And then, uh, sad to say, it becomes a bad habit. So people later on uh, is addictive to the cycle of without money, they don't work, they don't plan, they don't progress. So they always borrow and borrow and borrow until they die. The, the, you know, the money they borrowed was never even returned. You see, somehow people died out of the issues that when they die, the relatives are just hearing, you know, people coming to there and tell them, you know, your father owns me this, you, you all this. And then later on, they'll tell you, like, I've, I've heard that in the Philippines, they will tell you now, oh, your father owes me this 70,000 pesos, now he dies, so you have to pay. Wow. So that's how that's how people respond, you know, to to our uh, you know to our problems when we actually did not, uh, you know, come up with the agreement to even be uh, be upfront and truthful that if we borrow money, we have to pay. Otherwise, it will cause stress even to the point of your death. The stress your family will be stressed next is the peer pressure we do keep up with the Jonases, even if we can't to avoid shame or ridicule some of christians have a facade or people normally a lot of people especially in our birthplace you know we always want to put up you know a, a face that is confident and uh, you know, we, we dress up to for people to think that we have it, but to keep up with the Joneses, because again, the peer pressure, right? You need to come up with the fad, the trend. If you are in a school that is prestigious, you know, you want to blend in, right? I did that in the school where I was, and I saw a lot in, in, in the University of the Philippines. It's funny how I put the pressure, and now I'm laughing about it. Is because just to keep up with my schoolmates, college mates, um, you know, when they come in and they wear this esprit shoes, canvas shoes, and I kind of like it because it's canvas and it says spree on the side. You know what I did just to blend in? It's funny how I did it. You, I'm laughing about it. I bought a canvas shoes that is just as, as looks like a canvas shoes of that esprit. And because I know how to actually embroider, I put esprit embroidery on my shoes. So I blend in. And this is a peer pressure. You keep up with the Joneses, but actually you can't, right? It's, it's clever what I did, but it's a peer pressure that I don't want to be shamed or ridiculed. And they found out that I'm not us or they are rich and I am poor or you know, in a middle class family, right? So that is how we respond to stress of the peer pressure. The next one is when we are sick, ill and diseased, we panic quickly, anxiety, trauma, we, we tend to, you know, like we don't know where to go. We don't even know that we need to pray first and then we acted in wisdom. You see, when God is in you, I, I, I have, gone through so many uh, 
traumas of my kids when they are in you know in in disease you know and, and also accidents and how how come because when you are connected to the lord you never will feel anxious and traumatized i felt always the peace of god when it comes to many many things that shook shake is shaking my soul and my spirit um, you know, I, I, I've gone through my kids, you know, our house was robbed here, uh, our previous house. And even, you know, my kids were traumatized. My son got sick. Uh, Georgia had accident of the foot, you know, from the manhole. It went into the, you know, yung kanyang pinakahinlalaki na tinatawag, you know, all this. But I'm telling you in those press, I'm not I'm saying I'm good. I just felt the presence of God in all of those things that I need. I wanted to cry, but I can cry. It was just a piece of God that held me up for all the issues that I have to face, having families and having children. But people go through some lens of trauma and worse, they want to end their life. And also for their loved ones, they want it to also because ayaw na nilang mahirapan so they let their uh, relatives die and just approve okay not not is that is not what god wants and the next one is called bad relationships so when we are broken in relationships we go to court battles and that's another stress because you have to get to the attorney the you know to get to you have to get to get some money for it because you want to you know to want justice revenge and then you go with the bitterness the rage the anger and the wrath and the judgment and all of these things actually when you are filled of this you'll get sick that's the re this is what the lord is telling me about emotions about those bad relationships it can cause your body to react and that's why we need to come to jesus because when all these things are our, our usual response to the stresses, then we are the ones who are at the loss. In career and work, sometimes we want to go to that promotion. Sometimes we want to have more money because we have to do this. You see, we overworked to the point of exhaustion. Again, your body is the one that is loaned to that kind of push because you want to achieve something to prove something but the lord somehow will take you back and say huh? excuse me i'm here can you ask for wisdom you see because god will not actually give you the wisdom unless you ask remember the james 1 5 ask of wisdom because it's free okay so before you even put yourself into so many things and put yourself in your will to do things that it, you are not actually acting in wisdom then what happens it puts stress into your lives family we work hard to just lose health in the end to support our families that's true right so we um, sometimes neglect the time for them we lose the time for them it's all work 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 because we want to provide 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 but nevertheless you forgot the most important thing which is to nourish the relationship somehow you don't even have time during weekends you go to golf you go you know some some man doesn't really even care they like to relax i'm just going to go to golf i'm just going to go to basketball not even asking if the kids and the wife neither them or vice versa okay some women would just go to you know their mates and go out the whole day without even thinking about the time that they need to actually speak to their children speak to their husbands see these are the things that somehow i hear the lord to actually manage my time before and i kind of sit down and plan and and de not demand but just speak to my family members and let us get into what we call a unit of agreement so that we will operate in a way that is honorable to god and we never neglect time for each other and also set aside that time of belongingness it's so important that when you have a family you bond you don't have this shallow casual thing that's happening because when you are bonded in terms of adversity you are stronger to uh, edify and encourage one another and the next one is we want to keep relationships in broken relationships right but we can't keep up with the demands or obligations 
So you want to keep the old friends, but also you're meeting new friends. And then they have all these demands, right? Left, right, left. And you never keep, keep them. So what happens is the stress, all right? You either lose them or they lose you. You really have to decide because you are not this person that is just like God who is everywhere and can be everywhere and can be anybody to anyone, right? We are not God. We have limited time here on earth. In fact, the most longest time that we can ever be on earth is 70 years old. If you pass that, then you are blessed more, right? But 70, I am now 58. So how many days, how many years left before 70? Would I last till then? Or would I exhaust more now or just rest in God and come in agreement with God and say, Lord, I'm stressed out here. Can you please help me? Okay, so here we go. Jesus sympathized with all of our stresses and weaknesses. And he said that in the word. And he offers this for us, rest. He just simply said, come and learn. You see, when Jesus invites you to come, is you are going to not only rest, but you will learn. Because Jesus actually aim in each one of us is growth, rooted, built up, and established in him. I only Lord na mag-create ng isang anak niya na will be tossed to and fro, will be deceived, will always be a victim of the enemy, tossed right, left, right, left, and never come to a point of agreement about what they have to do with their lives that they have given the Lord Jesus Christ. Somehow, not to tossed to and fro just because of those stressors that we have mentioned. And we never come to, you know, sit down with the Lord and ask for wisdom. So come to me. This is a sure invitation from him. He says that, right? Jesus was the one who said it. So just come to him at the point of that stress, okay? And never get into your emotions and will kaagad. Put Jesus first. Come to him in prayer. Thank him for what happened, even though a request has not yet granted. Thank him. In fact, when you thank him in advance, he will do it. Why? Because you're actually, you know, making it uh, real and, and set it in the atmosphere that, that my God, Jesus can do it. You see, you are you have actually pestered me today, but I will thank Jesus now of the result because I know he can. You see, because we live by faith. And also faith says we can only come up to God that pleases him only by faith. If it's not of faith, the Bible says it is of sin. Because everything that we do apart from faith is actually recognized as flesh and also driven by the spirit of the demons that surrounds and influence those people whom we got into contact with and never get the results. Okay? So he makes sure you're taken care of and understood. That's why he's the one who said, come. Okay? Taken care of and understood because some people can just take you, you know, listen to you, but you're never understood. After that moment of, you know, of coffee and all that, you're dead, you're you're on your own again, right? And uh, somehow, that's the reason why a body of Christ is needed to actually support and build up and tell this person, okay, let's let's continue to seek God on this matter or seek some avenues about this problem. Next one is there is no one else reliable to listen and trust except him who made us. I mean, he made you, so he knows your cracks and flaws. Okay, so alam niya kung saan ka uh, embedded with the conception itself from your mother who knows when your mother was carrying you like my mother he told me she told me that while she was carrying me at eight months she saw my dad you know with another woman and she because she actually went off went uh we went and investigate uh his nightlife because my dad was a singer in the club and she saw from her very eyes what my father did with a woman walking towards Luneta Park or that that club, you see. So my mom carried me in a rejection and carried me in that sort of stress right there at, at, the, at, at an infancy, like in a fetus mode, 
fetus, uh, you know, uh, form, right? I was carrying the load of my mother. Okay, so, but Jesus, so Jesus knows you when he took you and saved you from the moment of your confession. He knows from where you were actually formed. He knows your mistakes, going to be mistakes, and even your sins, okay? So he's the master orchestrator of all of our lives for the best. So even if somehow things did not get our way, me master orchestrator, so Lord, sometimes he gets you back to the right designed plan of him, right? And you get back to that road. So you will achieve what is really for you and for me. So, and another thing too about him, that's why he wants to, he's inviting us to come to him, is that he wants us to be like him. He's not going to call, call us to come to him and then still carrying the baggage. He wants us to come to him so that we will learn from him. Okay, so that's the reason about Jesus. We need to, it's like Jesus is going to teach you some things that you will take on board for the rest of your life. And then you will be like him, walking down to this earth. And up, up until he died, Satan has nothing in him. That's what the Bible says. So, you know, when I sit down, this is a scripture I love. You know, when I sit down or stand up, Lord, you know, my thoughts, even when I'm far away, you see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I am going to say even before I say it, Lord. So this is the Psalm, uh, you know, King David, who just reckons, Lord, I have nothing to hide. Everything that I'm feeling today, everything that has gone today, you even know it before I even get into it. So he is acquainted with all of our ways. That's what Jesus said. I know you. So just come to me, right? I know I can, these things will work. But you are going everywhere. And I just want you to relax with me. Because I will be the one to tell you secrets from my glory. To give you what you need to do in times like this. Okay. So you, another scriptures, you search out my path. And my lying down, you are aware of all my ways. See, even you're lying down, God sees you. And he knows, he is aware of what you're going to do for the day or plan for the day. And the next one, he says, which is I saw love again. John 6, 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. So what does it mean when he's, Jesus said that? It's like there's nothing that will satisfy you in your life except him who will fill you with the things that you need for you and your existence. And says this, whoever comes to me, another invitation, shall not hunger. Okay, nothing when you come to the Lord as the bread of life as a source of your satisfaction and fulfillment, you will never hunger. You will never hunger for friendship. You will never hunger to patch up relationships. You never hunger to just buy your way to things that you would like to have because Jesus is enough for you to be sustained by. And whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Okay, we thirst for a lot of things in our lives just to feel good. But somehow those cravings are just lust and flesh. We never crave for the things that is beyond lust and flesh. Okay, we are physical, yes. But the most thing that Jesus wants us to feel and be satisfied is to come to him and be settled in our spiritual life. Because he is the only one that gives life to that spirit that we have, that we have connected. And then from that spirit, if it's spirit-filled, Spirit of God, word filled, then the spirit will control the part of you and make you stable in your areas of the soul. The next one. So he says this, I love this by uh, Michael Carino. He says, come to me means to make progress toward Christ. So every hurdle you have, it is actually a step toward Christ to yield your will. 
okay? So it's a progress to yield your will to drop your agenda, turn yourself toward God. Did you know that this very things that is in here is my progress to where now I am sharing to you the good news of Jesus? Because nothing has satisfied me, relationships, family, peers, friendships, church, pastors, and all the rest. They never did satisfy, except that I connected and surrendered to the call and to the voice of the Spirit. Because I will hear, you will hear him. You will hear your instructions on what you can do for all the things that we need, right? So this is what it is about when he says, come to me. It's an invitation to turn yourself toward God. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. So when he said, come to me, all of you, all right? This is anyone. This is believer or not. Because, you know, God knows, Jesus knows, the Father knows, the Holy Spirit knows that the prince of this world who has put a curse on each one of us existing on the earth is Satan. And so he knows that when he says, come to be all of you, he was speaking to all the crowds, whoever they are, and just says, you know, come to me. He's more concerned, anyone, believer or not, he invites them to come to him. That's why somehow some believers, uh, some non-Christians would see him, especially in the Middle East right now. They are being visited by Jesus himself and talks to them in their visions and in their dreams. See, that's how personal Jesus wants to rescue every single one. But he's more concerned with his own because, he, you know, these this people have come to know him and accepted him in a relationship. And then he says, those who are weary, I love this. When I get to this point, you know, when he emphasizes, I look to the dictionary. And these are the things that we are mostly feeling. You see, when you say weary, all right, it is a result, extreme tiredness, especially as a result of too much excessive exertion. There are people who are really driven in their strength, in their academic, uh, you know, uh, accolades and, 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 you know, their ability to give results, right? And so sometimes we are so weary to actually put on too much effort, but then it comes to nothing. So be worn out is another thing, or burnt out, burn out, exhausted, fatigued, stopped out of your energy, drowsy, sleepy, spent, tapos na, wala na, no, tapos na, drained, played out, and last of all is shattered, okay? So when Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are weary, these are people that have all these issues that, you know, nothing has happened with all their ways. It has become empty. Empty space, walang, walang results. There's no results, right? So what happens? We become shattered. And then says those who are heavy laden or carrying heavy burdens. You see, sometimes we carry heavy burdens. One could no longer hold or have control. And this is the invitation of Jesus, okay? You don't have control on this situation. So I just want you to come. Come and rest, find rest in times of this stress. But still, is it the next day you come up and then you run again and put everything at hand, plan things up, and then you fail again. But simply the Lord is saying, Can you just rest and just trust me in this matter? I've seen, you know, when the Lord will tell me how to rest, I rest. And after three days, or sometimes it's yearly, a year or years to wait. You know, God's always uh, have a way and means to actually for us sometimes to wait, not only days, but years. But the thing is, he will still be true to prove to you that he is actually have orchestrated behind your knowledge and you're in your situation. And you will be surprised 
of the good things that he has done. Somehow, sometimes, you know, God tests us during those times and we connect with Satan to spill out all this negativity and judgment. I am also one of those. I'm telling you. Because I'm one of those who grew up like, you know, everything is being given to us as a spoiled brat, you know, rich kind of kids because my dad was earning a lot before, right? And then boom, boom, and suck. And then that, you know, that craving was just sucked up. And so if I'm not careful of knowing the word of God, now that I know Jesus, I can still have that kind of, you know, adult kind of way to actually, my response to stress is to just blurt out and curse. I even cursed my, the mates before when I was young at four because she never did give me what I want. Okay. Ganun kasalbahay, ganun. That is the, how sometimes, you know, our parents will actually poison us to the point they give and give and give, but nevertheless, we did not work out into the that area of teaching us lessons. That's the reason why when I have my own kids and I know the word, I taught them how to be flexible and know them that they, they it's not always better process and always giving to your whims and wishes, but you need to learn because somehow on your own one day as an adult, you'll find that not all of your wishes will be given to you because God will see to it that you learn his ways. So that's that's the thing about us. We go to God, we leave it unto God, don't carry the burdens, and because some things are out of our control, we cannot hold it back. People who have you know, done our sins and betrayed us straight or you cannot believe that this person did to you, especially your loved ones. And not only once, but many times. You see, if you get into that mode, you'll probably get to the fourth one or fifth one to actually stop it because this person is actually playing up with their lives and playing up with your integrity, being that person that is pure in the relationship. See, somehow, really sometimes, but you see, God, again, is alive. And when you ask him whatever sort of thing that he wants you to do, and I salute those people who have been betrayed and still good to their husbands or their wives, and even to the point that they still love them more, right? Not that they're weary, okay? So these people, do you think God will not reward them? Because they have displayed what it is to be like Jesus, the unforgivable those murderers, the criminal on the right side when he was on the cross, right? He forgave him right there and there. The one who killed, murdered people. And he was crucified. And Jesus, who is holy, was crucified the same as he is. But you see, God, Jesus, is not only preaching, but he has lived it to the last end of his life. And that is what Jesus is expecting us and molding us from. We're not just people who quote the verses or his words. He wants us to actually apply it and know the fruits of it. Not in the sense that we'll be doormats because never Jesus doesn't want you to become doormats because Jesus also is balanced in a way that he has given you authority to use. Okay, But it's wisdom it is seeking God and his word that will help you know what you need to do on that situation that you are in. So you better sit down with him, listen, and he will give you that peace, that pass it all understanding, that pass it the, the character or the oppression of the enemy that has become to your life. He will pass all those things you will have that you know that element of virtue that you will pass over the sins of many and you will be like christ because that is what he wants us to know to become like him that's why in a relationship if you hurt somebody and then you said i'm sorry and then you keep on hurting that one does not mean business with god he he is not really connected with God because if you are connected with Jesus at the point that you have sinned and repented then you know how it hurts someone and you don't repeat it right because you know how it actually have broken 
the trust, the relationship towards somebody. So for you, keep cool because God has all the records of the things that we say and do, whatever people say. That's why sometimes if people right now, if people uh, face up front, face me, and you know, my, 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 my children saw it, Gary saw it, but I was just a mute, uh, subdued, right in silence while he was she, he was blurting it out in front of many uh, members of the church. But who was shamed? It was not me because I did not respond to his, uh, you know, blatant, blatant accusations. Okay, he was the one where people are actually, you know, being talked to, talked to. See, the, the world watch what was watching on us, how we conduct the very stresses that was given to us, allowed by God to us, okay? So Jesus is your shepherd and he carries you in his arms. So come unto me, all of you. Lead them like a shepherd and carry them in your arms forever. See, our Lord is our great shepherd. And you ne may never see it in the spiritual realm. But you are always being watched by the great shepherd. He knows us by name. Okay? And he will carry you if you're broken. He will find you when you are lost. He will never let his sheep to be eaten by the wolves. He will always protect them. All right? Next is... The Lord is good to all. See, this is what I'm saying. The Lord is good, both the righteous and the wicked. And his tender mercies are over all his works. It's an invitation to every single one, not singled out. Kahit pa mong yan, a murderer or, you know, a drug addict used to be like this, used to be like that. Kahit a prostitute and everything. God, Jesus, has mercy on all. And so we don't really put a stumbling block in their lives or gossip about them because they are looking for answers in themselves. And we as people of God should bring the solution to these people. All right. Sometimes we have a tendency to actually criticize and gossip. Hey, we can always repent and ask God for mercy that you also will not be involved in those people seeking their lives. Because who knows, that might be their last night or day and they want to kill themselves. And here you are, you are catering for them and their needs, asking them, how are they? Because the thing about us is that, how are you? If you're okay, that is like travels or it just changes the atmosphere of a person, driven, caring, heavy laden. That's why we need to be people of good news. You know, if God uh, somehow speaks to you to actually, uh, you know, call somebody or give a note, those are kindness that is actually making changes in people's lives. So we've got to do it. Like if you are in a relationship, if you are a wife, you know, and you see your wife is crying, why don't you just hug with no, with no uh, words? Or give a note of assurance. Because those things matter. Those little things matter. But here you are. You're just nothing. You're doing nothing. Or you're not even empathizing. I mean, all Christians must have that element of empathy. Because that is who Jesus is. He was compassionate and has passion for every lost as well as for his beloved ones. So be like him, right? And listen to his instructions. So the Lord is good, a strong in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. Watch that. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. You are going to stand there and face it. He's going to, he's going to make sure you are protected and you are going to, uh, you know, to be given uh, ample care and support right there when you are actually about to fall. And then says, let them thank the Lord for his faithful love and his wondrous works for all, all people. Look at that. So God is such a good God that all of these people are, are showing his magnificence. Just look at those places that we are seeing, the clouds, the stars. You see, all of these things, the, the animals, you know, we sometimes need to open up our eyes to the things of creation. Then we will see that God is there for us. Because God satisfied the one, watch this, who was parched 
with thirst. You need answers. You need, you need a concrete solution. You are parched with thirst for an answer of yes or no, right? And he filled up the hungry with good things. Do you think God will be sadistic not to give you what you need? He will, all right? But we need to connect to him and know him at that very point of stress. Because somehow there's a message. And if I learn this too, if he's quiet, just leave it there in the hands and just tell God, Lord, you are the one who works handy is a handiwork of heaven. You made it, Lord. You will make it happen. And I'm Lord, I just commit to you and I put my trust in you and I love you. And thank you for this opportunity that in this stress I will find rest. Okay. So take his yoke instead. This is what I love. This is the last one from this, you know, segment of this message. So he says, come to me, him, all of you, all of us who are heavy laden. And then he says, I take his yoke instead. We have to take his yoke. So there is like an exchange. All right. I take your yoke. I take your yoke, but you take my yoke. All right. He is a humble and gentle teacher. He says that because I am humble and gentle in heart. See, the one you're going to has a humble and gentle heart. You are not going to be stressed to come to him and be sadistic that pound you, pound you, pound you with the stress that you're already having. He's humble that he will understand. He will be gentle to deal with your heart slowly but surely as you will understand it. So when stress happens to us as children, he always teaches us something. So listen and see. It says there in verse 28, let me teach you. Okay, let me teach you because I am meek and humble in heart. So when you go to God and you give him the stress of or the problems, there is a connecting, of, you know, teaching time. That's a teaching time from him and you will learn from him wisdom. And you will learn secrets and steps because part of the God the Father is teaching us how to grow in the kingdom. Okay. And that is what it is about this invitation of Jesus. He will teach wisdom to go steps to your glory so that you will experience his joy in your life. Ang gusto ng Lord hindi happenings to happen, kundi joy and fulfillment in him. And you also have learned something from that experience of yours. And then he says, his yoke is easy to bear, always for our soul's good, because that's easy. The only thing that we can actually bear is something that we understand. So he will teach you in the ways that you can connect with what he is going to give you. And then, and his burden is light. Something we can carry based on our faith, not sadistic like Satan. And ways. You see, sometimes you have to be careful that you're listening to Satan. But what is offering you in the shortcut is actually going to affect you more. So when it's in stress, go to God. Don't be like you can do. You can do. You can do. Especially, you know, some, you know, some other creatures like men have the ability to, they say, I can do this. I can do that. I can find this. I can find that. But nevertheless, God wants to speak to you. Hey, you're not actually learning from me. Okay? You're learning in your own strength. And how this provision is going to be for your family is not through this kind of steps. Because this decision that you're making is not going to be good to you. In fact, it will be shame on you and my name as well. So you need to actually go to God how the burden can be lifted. In accordance to your faith, he will actually tell you. And then next is he knows what he has started in you. He knows it from the point of salvation confession. He knows you already before you even ask. And therefore, he's able to finish it with you and for you. So your journey of faith from the moment of confession, every single stress knows it before it even happens. What is teaching you? So you go to him and tell him, Lord, I cannot finish this stress. Will you be here with me to run the race and finish it with colors? 
Amen. With colors meaning to say, you've got the element of God's grace. You learn from his ways and you become stable in your character. And you've got on board the virtue of Christ in you. So later on, when you get again to the, another same kind of stress, you now know how to handle it. That's the beauty about God. When we come to him in all of these things and take his yoke, Take his learning curve. Take the learning curves from him, okay? Because he's going to teach you. But you need to ask. He knows what's good for you or not or necessary for your soul's growth and stability in him. You see, some of the Bible says this, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. I love that about what Jesus said, or Apostle Paul said that. So lahat daw ng bagay na we have and we are connected with, you think it's, you know, it's permissible say you to get into, okay? But without wisdom, some of those things that you permit yourself are not beneficial for you. It didn't give you any advantage. It's just zero dollar, kumbaga. Nothing has happened with your Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin effect in, in a spiritual sense. Because you never involved God in that matter so every time what's good for you is what's necessary for you when god allows it to happen and you must seek his will in the matter okay let's look at john on our verses on the last day of the festival this is jesus because he was preaching during the festival um, you know celebrations of jewish tradition the great day while jesus was standing there watch this he cried out sumigaw siya let anyone who is thirsty come to me. Let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Wow, that is so awesome. He was speaking right there and crying out, hey, apart from me, the one that I'm giving you, all right, if you do not take the water that I'm giving you and the bread, that I'm giving you to eat now, right? And commune with me in your stress life now or your problem right now. You will never find that there are in your heart flowing rivers of water, answers that you have that was given to you by God that is inexhaustible and you will find yourself flourishing even in the midst of trials. That is who Jesus is. When he talks about our problems, he's got something in mind that is good for us. Okay, never bad for us. All the stresses, all the problems are in alignment to what he wants done and us and complete it. Okay, so come my children. This is what his invitation. Listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Look at that. Come to me, all of you are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, because I will teach you. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. This is in Psalm 32, 8 and 9. Have a look at this. Best pathway for your life. He will guide you along. And this is the thing. While you are being guided, I will advise you and watch over you. If you're taking it on board or not okay and watch this warning don't be like a senseless horse or mule that needs a bit and bridle to keep it under control you see this is a warning jesus was so good it's like telling us hey trust me in this situation but here you are like a horse uncontrolled did you know the horse's nature really is a, a, an animal that you can't control that's why they need a bit and bridle something that connects to their mouth to the head and the, the the thing in the in the eyes like that and also the rain from the uh, the rider why because the horse nature is untamable apart from the bits and br bridles they are untamable. You cannot really control them. If they want to kick you out, they'll kick you. If they want to slap you with their tail, they will. Unless they are tamed from when they are uh, uh, young and have been used with the bits and bridles, they will not be able to run the race in a horse racing course. You see, and Jesus said that. We're like, sometimes we are senseless 
We never know what we need to do because guess what? We are accustomed to our own ways when it comes to the same stressors that is happening. And Jesus is saying, stop that. You're always doing that. Don't go to any credit cards or everything borrow just because you want to prove something. All right. Or just because you, 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 sometimes you need to pause and just keep your eyes shut and say, Lord, I don't have anything, zero bank account, but I want you to actually supply. And this is what you want. I, it's the beauty when you just trust the Lord. I've seen miracles in our lives that when we just mention God, you know this, this is our needs. And we just quietly wait for God. And before you know it, somehow the Lord supplies and more than what we need. And you know what brought us into our, into our lives is more trust. And we have cried tears because of out of thankfulness of our hearts to God. See, this is what it is about us somehow. Never be like the senseless horse or mule. Na parati ka na lang, you are always keeping it under control. Let God take the rein and be the you, God directing you to where you should go. So his aim is rest for our souls. So here, Jesus is our overall lifesaver. John 14, 27, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. That's a gift. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Who said this? It's in John. It's Jesus. While there, he heard these words from the Lord himself. And it's an invitation for all his followers. All right. So his salvation is our first step when we get born again. Then he saves us more to any area and part of our soul that needs his care and guidance lifetime. When you come to know Jesus, he's not just going to bring you to heaven. Your part of the soul is also being nurtured, changed, and sanctified by him. Watch how he does that with you in your uh, experience and circumstances. Our soul is complex. We cannot attend to every issues of our hearts at one time, but he can. He can do that to actually change you. Somehow, yung mga iba na may experience ng revival, it was like a swoop. Everything was changed. It's like being, being born again. You're no longer in charge. This time, it's the Holy Spirit that is in charge. That's a good thing that you need to ask, you see. So, But he can attend to every issues of our hearts. Right? He knows that. Our souls need rest. That's why he said, so that your so that your souls will find its rest in, in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, which is our mind, will, and emotions. And why? Okay, why do we need rest in our souls? That's what Jesus said, which is mind, will, and emotions, because our mind is powerful, but easily weakened by unfavorable circumstances like traumas or mental issues. See, our mind is powerful, but once it is cracked and we don't know what to do and we didn't go to God, it is weakened right there and there with traumas. And before you know it, you live in the traumas. Next, our will is also powerful, but weakened by wrong decisions or choices that has to face consequences. Okay, somehow we choose, but then we never really pray to God if it's approved or we did not inquire even, Lord, this is so good, but would you like me to get this or become this or enter into this? So sometimes our choices makes us face an unfavorable circumstances. So because of the wrong choices, right? It is powerful when it is exercised into the will of God. That's why Jesus is so powerful in his ministry, so powerful, has favor with God and men because it is only the Father's will that is the evidence of his strength and power. Amen? Next is our emotions. is also powerful, but weakened by the wrong display, use, or by its expressions. What do I mean by that? If you are actually, actually have this desire in your emotions, like, you know, in couples, you're sexually driven. But if your expression is not in the boundaries and the sanctity of marriage, then your emotions is weakened by the things that is of satanic. 
you get to the lust and then you entertain it, you put it into action and then bring shame to you. And the shame sometimes it's playing up if you don't have the grace of God and the word and you don't know how to approach it in wisdom. Because somehow, when we get into those weakened emotions or mistakes emotions or display of our emotions, somehow we get to what? Cover up. Okay? That's not what God wants. You need to face everything up in truth and find freedom. That's why Jesus said, come to me. Okay? Let's reason it out together because I will understand what, why you did such a thing. But you don't cover up. Because Adam and Eve did that. They cover up with fig leaves. But God took it out and brought another covering for them, which is his covering, not your covering. Because if it's your covering from the time that you have seen or done something wrong, it will not be good to you. It will actually affect generations. So indeed, let us be careful. So then all these things will cause our body to respond if we are not careful this part of our soul and mind and will if it's not in alignment with god's will and what jesus will teach you and you take it on board your body responds and you become ill then we are wearied and heavy laden and so jesus actually put that invitation come to me bigat na bigat ka na ba hindi mo na ba kaya Eh bakit parati ka pa rin gumagawa ng sarili mong paraan at lakas? Stop it. Because Jesus wants to offer you some other else. Seek him out in the scriptures fast if you can. Because you will find the answers in the secret place. <clears throat> so here are the scriptures again. First Kings 5.4 But now the Lord my God had given me rest on every side. So that there is neither adversary or evil occurrent. This is King David, that all of the wars have been won and that he found rest. And now he's time to relax because God the Father did it for him. He always inquires of all of the battles. That's where I learned from his life, that all of your battles, ask God, inquire where and what. If he's silent, leave it there because he's just thinking the most awesome plans and steps for you to enter in and also for your good. There remained it therefore a rest to the people of God for he that is entered into his rest he also had ceased from his own works as God did from his. Alright, what this is saying is if God the Father rested after the six days of creation and found the seventh day for him to rest then also who knows that rest in him will find that he's going to cease from his own work. Tapos na, ginawa mo na lahat eh. You cease and then it's time to rest. And give it in the hands of the master. So there is that one that remained a rest for the people of God. The practical steps, last but not the least, to gain Jesus' rest. One, before we go to stress mode, go to him in prayer number two seek his word for instructions for guidance and answers as for his wisdom because it's free it's teacher's time by the lord by the holy spirit so as for wisdom right next if our ways fail for desires granted do not fret or worry our sovereign god knows the cause the start or beginning up to its end and its results leave the matter and try with him next all right so the things that you want to do it didn't happen just leave it right there lord i leave this matter with you i've gone through so some court battles myself face it with the judge but nevertheless i see god's hand even to the verdict of the mouth of the judge because people put me there put me through there without me knowing about you see sometimes the enemy tries to concoct things to make you <clears throat> to make you worse in your name but jesus has a plan next is trust him with all your hearts and do not lean in your own ways or cleverness somehow you think your steps is so good this will be approved, approved but then you go there 
if you did not inquire of God, it's a loss. Know that he is God and Savior. He's always the God of justice and righteousness. If we're played out by physical or spiritual enemies. Okay? Pag pinaglaroan tayo ni enemy, alam ni Lord John. So give it to the Lord. They all are bound to him. Mapa demon, mapa tao. Let him deal with them. Next, always strive to be at peace. Strive it. You know, find a place where you can be at peace. If I'm stressed, I go to places. Like I have a favorite place if I want to just pour out my heart to God. Right to here in, in, in the West, in, in Sydney. Right? I go to that special church where I pour out my heart and strive to be at peace when I come back. Always in one's inner self to others. Kailangan sa ibang tao, maging peaceful ka. And even in the midst of unfavorable circumstances. Cry if you must, but don't linger too long. Somehow, ang tagal-tagal na, right? Ando dun ka pa. Pero somehow, of course, the hurt is deep. That's why it it is longer. Because some people are really, you know, they're not really uh, aware of the cause of uh, of heartache. They, they cost you. So, but do not linger too long. Always speak peace to yourself. Seek guidance from spirit-filled called servants or counselors. Elders of the church. The Bible says that they will guide you and pray with you till you find desired rest or be healed. Right? Put the oil and you will be healed. They have been anointed by God for his people, his church. And then last but not least is wait in patience and quiet rest. Because somehow in our, in our waiting, hindi tayo quiet eh. Okay? Let us be quiet. Rest as it requires. Our time is not his time. Then we will find and then enter his rest next. You see, God is a great orchestrator of our own lives. We give it to him at the first time of confession of salvation and just let him do the job with your own precious dear life. Okay, because he will always champion it for you. Like, where I ever thought that I will be alive after that COVID incident? In fact, that COVID incident made Jesus more known in my life because he's put me on a marching and he i know that i am marching with him because they knew me as a miracle lady that all their medicines in science never did work but as soon as they left me on my own jesus was there to revive me amen so that is what i'm talking to you about having rest in times of stress yes you're going through it but have a rest going through the stress because at the end of that journey and passing through that dark tunnel is a light that awaits you amen so in times of weariness and heavy burdens we must cease from our own work cease tanggalin mo na yung kaya mo tanggalin mo na yung utak mo because somehow yung utak mo galing yan sa iyong poverty spirit dali yan sa mga baggages mo you know, let go of God. Ask God, what is this, Lord? Where is it coming from? Let me know. Give me wisdom. Okay? Go to Jesus first. He said, come when our souls need rest. And we will find it in him. Okay? If you give your life to him, you'll find it in him too. Don't leave him out. He will teach us. He will guide us forever. As the scriptures promise, I will watch over you and guide you and advise you. So don't leave, you know, don't leave yourself without those kinds of promises. Now, so yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. He knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. No matter what, your aim should come forth as gold. Don't be come forth as a shame, right? Come forth as gold when tests and temptations come. My feet have closely, watch this, I love it. My feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his way without turning aside. I love this about Job. So he went on straight to follow and trust God. And after three years, he was doubled in all his blessings that was taken by Satan. Amen. Which was allowed by God, by the way. Right? But look at the faithfulness of God in his life. We are, an, hindi tayo ibig sabihin, we are different from Job. Job is also a human being, but has gone through a lot. 
but still in the end, I will come forth as gold, no matter what. Because Lord, I will follow your steps and keep it following your way without turning aside. Okay? Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. And Jesus said that, and which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Kailan ba yung buhay mo? If then, if you are not able to do that, a small thing as that, which is just span of life, in Jesus' eyes is a small thing, right? Sa atin, malaking big thing yun. We wanted to live longer for seeing our, you know, the abundancy of our family, right? Then why are you anxious about the rest? Kung hindi mo madugtuhan ng iyong buhay hanggang saan at hindi mo alam, then bakit ka anxious sa nangyayari sa iyo today? Jesus just wants you to address it to Him because He is the master orchestrator and the wisdom. If people said that, don't trust their diagnose or don't trust what they have said to you. Trust the God who can change their hearts and their spirits. That is the thing that you are learning from so i love this about saint augustine you have made us for yourself O lord and our hearts are restless until they rest in you see all the stresses all the things that comes our way god made us and until we know and realize that we can rest with him in all the facets of our being then we will never find rest because all of the things that we can find rest in our own lives and issues is only through Him. Amen? So you can gain, this is what I love again, a life of rest until we give God the rest of your life. Probably there are issues in our lives that is connected to the soul that is not have been given up. And God is just teaching you to give it to God. Because when you give it to God, he will turn things around for good. Because he promised that. Romans 8.28, all things work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Are you called by God? Do you love God? So here is a message that you can gain a life of rest until you give God the rest of your life. Don't be like the horse that you are taking it on your own and you are untamable you are driven to do your own thing release the rain and tell god lord i will not handle it i release that to you and also what you will learn with that is your faith is strengthened your trust is getting built up because never again from that moment of your stress you will attend to what you can but only to what your god jesus can amen because all things are possible to those who believe. And nothing is impossible with God. Amen? So we need to realize that nothing in this world can give us a true spiritual rest, genuine peace, authentic happiness, because some are ha happy, but not really authentic. Okay? Gawa, gawa lang niya. And real satisfaction in life. Who can give this all? is only Jesus. And he's an invitation, come to me. All of you who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Amen. So this is now your message and your teaching for today. And I hope that you're going to actually meditate, listen again, because God has always a message. Just as much as those in the Old and New Testament, every single one of them have lost mistakes and how God orchestrates it for their own good until they finish the race. So are you stressed? It's about time now to go to the invitation of Jesus in your life. So God bless. And can I pray with you? And for those who have not known Jesus, I want you to, um, you know, to speak these words to you and accept him. And then I'll pray for all who have listened this message. So ask Jesus in your heart. So Jesus, today I realize 
that my life is nothing apart from you. And I will never have that rest, that answers that I needed apart from you. So today, I open up my heart and forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me for all my mistakes, my own wisdom, my own strength that I display. Forgive me, Lord. And I just give you reign. And I just give you and surrender my life to you. And you, Lord, I entrust this life to you. And I know that you're going to help me make it right before you through your blood that will cover me all day. And now, Lord, I open my heart and receive you as my personal Savior and Lord. And Lord, I thank you for today. And I give you praise that I'm now your child and I will walk in accordance to the Spirit. Amen. So let me pray for those who have listened. Father, I thank you for this time. And everyone is experiencing this stress. And I thank you, Lord God, that you are a God who is above all and controls all. Whatever, Lord God, your people, mostly your people are experiencing right now, you are aware. Wherever we are situated, whether our countries are in chaos or under the evil powers, Lord, you know them. You know us by name and you are the one who will protect your sheep. Lord, guide all of us. Help us to connect with you in times of stress. Let us, Lord, be embedded with the voice of the Spirit always, that, Lord, that we will hear his very instructions, just as much as you, when you are here on earth, is always in alignment to his voice. And so, Lord, help us to learn your ways in all of the stress that is happening right now. And thank you, even now, Lord, that we will find rest in our stress. Forgive us, Lord, if we have made ourselves our strength to be in display rather than just trust and to just convey to you and inquire of you father forgive us and make us learn like jesus lord that in every pressure that he had oh god uh, your pressures of people pressures of the enemy lord he was on top because he relies on you he prays with you he honors you he seeks your will and he is in alignment with the Holy Spirit. Father, let us learn how the way Jesus conduct his life here on earth is even now, Lord, that we are facing a lot of stress. Lord, you are the master orchestrator of all, and we just come to you today because we know that we will find rest in our souls. Thank you, Father, for the invitation of Jesus. I know that he will be faithful to answer us. Even now, Lord, you will, because you will give the things that we ask in accordance to your will and purpose. In Jesus' name, absolutely, Lord God, we thank you and we bless those who hear this and that they will have the answers from you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, and we bless them. May the love of God, the precious Holy Spirit's fellowship, the grace and mercy of our Lord be upon all of us, right here, right now, and even forevermore until he comes. Amen and amen. So God bless you. Thank you for dropping by and standing by with our message today. And I hope that you have learned on how to connect to Jesus with your stress. Rest. Come to him and you will find rest for your souls. Amen. God bless you all. This is now Sister Annie signing off from Christ is the Head Fellowship. Bless you.